The plastic hazards conversation is a global one, and countries that have put in place policies to manage plastic waste have used different approaches ranging from total ban on plastics, ban on the production of certain plastics, levying taxes on plastic products, to mandatory recycling targets. Did Kenya consider some of these approaches? Yes, we considered all these options. Uh, let me also say that what we are doing now is not written in stone. This is going to be a work in progress and we will make adjustments as we go along. It is not written in stone. We are very open to Kenyans' ideas. For example, for this ban uh, to take effect, every single Kenyan must want it to succeed. And then there's a big elephant in this conversation. For essential businesses like those ran by garbage collectors, more effort has to be put to adjust to the realities of the ban. While Lema still permits the use of garbage bags, it insists they must be imprinted with details of the manufacturers and end users. This is yet to be done by most manufacturers. Kenyan households now mostly use the garbage bags they have left as the printed ones are yet to be supplied or find other ways of disposing trash. Usually they used to provide for us the plastic bins, but now they cannot provide for us the, uh, the buckets. So at the end of the day, it is just us find a way of trashing the bins, but we have a place where we trash our old you know, uh, that, but I cannot keep on. I live on the 10th floor. I cannot keep on, like I have a packet of milk, I go downstairs, it's really cumbersome. Uh, Alafu kwa kambuni mali penye munaenda kutengeneza tena hiyo iwe na jina ya hiyo kambuni na majina ya na nini namba za simu za huyo na hawa wahindi wanasema hiyo wanaokopa hawawisi wamekataa so many households in Kenya have been using used plastic bags which they have been getting freely from the supermarkets to dispose of garbage. But right now what happens now that plastic bags have been banned? Certain garbage companies are asking the households to dispose of garbage in containers such as this which they then come and collect from the households and dispose of directly to their garbage trucks and off to the dumping sites. Of course this then posing different kinds of dangers. For example this is clearly a health hazard. East Africa's Rwanda is seen as a model country for its effective ban on plastic bags since 2008. You will not see plastic bags floating around the streets, hanging from trees, and plugging up drains in Rwanda. In fact, many consider Rwanda's capital, Kigali, to be the cleanest city in Africa. All right, so now I want to find out exactly how Rwanda managed to transition successfully and whether there's a thing or two that Kenya can learn about plastics from Rwanda. So I'm going to try to get in touch with my colleague Eugene Anangwe from Rwanda. I'm just going to do a video call from WhatsApp and have a chat with him about this. Just to try and share some lessons because Eugene has been there for some time uh, to find out what lessons Kenya can find from them. Hi, Eugene. Hi, Sharon. How are you doing? I'm very fine, thank you. So, you know, we are talking big about plastics in Kenya now. Right, I've been following all the talk about plastic bans in Kenya. Right, and we want to find out how did Rwanda manage to phase out okay. plastics successfully? Right, with Rwanda, actually what happened is that in 2004, uh, there was a cabinet decision that was made that, you know, we have to do away with plastic bags after they were seen as a menace. Uh, the whole street were littered with especially the black uh, plastic bags which people used to use, uh, you know, to pack uh, various uh, products. And uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the almost colorless bulletin uh, bags which were used to, you know, wrap mail, uh, even water. And so uh, what uh, the cabinet decided in 2004 was that we have to face this out. And you can imagine uh, the resolve that uh, the cabinet had with no legal background or backup. 
to actually, uh, uh, you know, implement this. They did uh, push the public to actually adhere or uh, respect this until 2008 when a formal uh, law was actually put in place by the parliament to actually ban the use of plastic bags. And so it started off first as a resolution by a cabinet mm -hmm. and then into a legal, uh, you know, uh, thing that uh, right. was uh, passed by parliament and then it started off from there, 2004, then 2008. All right. It wasn't easy because Yes, because uh, the, 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 the citizens, especially those who are business people who used to uh, wrap some of the products using plastic bags, uh, pro uh, protested against this. Mm -hmm. And they had to uh, be uh, trained or told the importance of keeping off the plastic bags. And this is how they, uh, you know, embraced the whole idea. Okay. And Rwanda is where it is today. All right. And I can say that that is kind of a similar reaction we are seeing here in Kenya. And what would you say are some of the gains that have come out of this policy in Rwanda? Just briefly. Right. The gains, very, very, very significant. When you look at Rwanda, when you hear of Rwanda, when it comes to the cleanliness, it, it's evident. You do not see any plastic bags developed on uh, uh, any sort of data in the industry. And so the environment has been very clean. Uh, the, 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 the land, uh, you know, uh, the soil has been very fertile. When, when it comes to the street where they've planted grass, you know, it's so green because uh, the, the, the soil is very fertile. So one thing for sure is that it has put right on the map of, of one of the countries that remain clean and, and, and environment, uh, right. you know, a survey kind of country that respects as much as of environment. These environment are important. All right. Many thanks, Eugene Anangwe, my colleague there from uh, Kigali. And the question now is, can Kenya learn a thing or two from this policy that has been effected effectively in Rwanda? There are many lessons to be drawn. I hesitate always to compare ourselves to countries like Rwanda or Uganda simply because our economy is much larger. We have got so many more manufacturers, more industries here. So although we are united in wanting to address the uh, polythene bags, each country, because of its distinct situation and perspective, has to have nuances that cater to that country. So Kenyans, Yes, we're together in East Africa, but we must address it in the Kenyan way and in the Kenyan manner. And that's why I've said, going forward, we will just continue to listen to the perspectives of Kenya and incorporate them as we go. But I look forward to a polythene bag free and beautiful Kenya. Some plastic manufacturing companies in Kenya have since gone out of business, leading to hundreds of job losses. The government is optimistic that the situation is self-resolving. For me as an environmentalist, I'm excited about the jobs that I am creating. I just ask Kenyans to find time to come to this exhibition today and tomorrow and to see the diversity of Kenyans that are exhibiting the materials here. Everyone here is telling me that now, since the announcement of the ban, business is booming. We will create more jobs and opportunities for Kenyans than those jobs that will be lost for those individuals that are working on that line that manufactures plastic uh, bags. So as we look for alternative methods, we also need to find out what is their durability in the environment. Are they going to take one year? Are they going to take 10 years? And what is the effect of that? In case uh, people choose to ban them as a means of getting rid of them, do they release gases into the atmosphere? Which gases are these? Are they greenhouse gases that will increase to you know, global warming? So those are some of the things that we need to take into consideration. A few weeks after the plastic bag ban was effected in Kenya and the policy ping pong continues among the players. I guess the question is, is a plastic free Kenya an end deserving of the phase out means that's been put in place? Do Kenyans unanimously agree on the gains this policy promises? Do they have to? Or should the stewardship of the vision be entrusted to the leadership as an act of posterity? Sharon Momani, KTN News. Which goal for Kenya? Now, 13 members shy.